All right. Good morning, everybody. So tests have been graded. I'll get those back to you by the end of class today. And we are going to move on to the next unit. Now, we don't have a lot of time to spend on it. So we're just going to do the first couple of lessons, and then we'll start to review for the final. So Monday and Tuesday, Monday have a lesson. Uh, tomorrow, you have a work day. Wednesday, you have a lesson. Thursday, you have a work day. And then Friday, we're going to start hitting real hard. I'll give you a big fat review a packet for your uh, final. And we'll start reviewing for it Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the following week. So we are going to dabble in the next unit a little bit. So let's get started on that. Warm up today seems like it has nothing to do with anything. It says to factor these. How do you factor just a number? We're so used to just X's and stuff like that. How do you factor a number? Mr. Richards, how would you factor a number? Like on the board, just a number. Find the greatest number multiple. Uh, let's find factors that go into. I like that. You guys know anything that goes into 12? 12 and 1, 6, 2. I want you to break it down. You ever done a factor tree before? Factor trees? Huh? Well, let's do a little factor tree. Let's see what goes into 12. So I like what you're saying. Uh, 2 and 6 was something, correct? So 2 and 6 goes into it. Uh, now, how do you know that off the bat? Just looking at it from experience, you know 2 goes into this, correct? It's something to go on, you know, two goes into it, then you figure it out, okay, what else goes into a six? Can you break six down any? Yeah, you can break six down into what? Another two and a three. And you keep breaking it down more and more and more until you finally get down to something where you can't break it down anymore. These are all prime numbers, correct? So another way of writing 12 is there were two twos and a three. You could write it as two squared times three right there. So that's our answer. That's what I mean by factor. Can you break it down to smaller little numbers that multiply together to be this? And that's what you've been doing with X's too. You know, when I say factor something with X's, you're breaking down to smaller pieces that multiply together. All right, number two, it's no different, 146. Now you might not be able to spot this. Think about the strategy though. Do you know a number for sure that goes into this? Oh yeah, you see it's even, you got something to go off of. So you start breaking it down. Okay, I know a two goes in this. Now, if you didn't know <coughs> what else goes into it, what would you do with your calculator? You'd say 146 divided by two, correct? You'd get out some number and then you'd have to analyze that. In this case, it turned out to be 73 like that. And then you look at 73 fresh. Can anything go into 73? The answer is no, that's prime. So you've broken this down into the smallest number of things you can that multiply to be this. This might seem like a silly warm-up, and it kind of is. But the thing I'm trying to drive at in this unit eventually is we'll have really big polynomials like x cubes and x to the fourth kind of things, and we'll want to factor that. If you know something that goes into it, then you can figure out other things that are left over. For example, you knew 2 went into that. You can figure out 73 also did. And no different with this big thing. It's huge. What goes into that? You got to have something to start with. Probably 2. So you can get out your calculator. You probably can't do that in your head, right? It's like you need to divide. You, so we're going to have to learn some division skills here. If you know something that goes into a polynomial, 896 <coughs> works for me. All right, now 896, that looks even again, doesn't it? Let's divide that by two. Uh, I don't know, 448. Sweet. Can we keep going? <coughs> keep going until you can't go anymore. I think two goes in this too. I think it goes into 224 times. Does two go into that. Shoot, let's just keep going down the chain here. One, one, 12. Does two go into that? We're slowly whittling this thing down to smaller and smaller parts. Two does go into this 56 times. We're almost to the bottom. 56, what goes to 56? I'm thinking like seven and eight. Would you agree? So we break this down to a seven and an eight. We're getting down farther. Can't break seven down anymore, that's prime, but can you break down eight some more? How many twos go into eight, anybody know? Three of them, right? So this eight can branch off into a two times a two times a two. So if you kind of add all this up, this is a lot of stuff going on. How many twos were going into this thing all together? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There were two, eight twos. So I can write this as two times itself eight times, two to the eighth. And there was one other number involved, a uh, seven that couldn't break down any farther. Now, that was a little weird to do, but did it make sense? Because that's essentially what the big goal is for this unit. Now, it's not going to be numbers like this. I'm going to give you things that look more, more like this. 
I'm going to give you some big thing, and you're going to figure out something that goes into it. Say maybe x plus 2 goes into it. And if you know something that goes into it, guess what you just did? You just did division over and over again, right? If I know this goes into it, I divide by it. I figure out what goes into it. We're going to learn some skills called long division eventually, where you can take a big thing and break it into a piece and another piece, and then break those down and break those down. And we're going to factor in the exact same way as this. That's kind of what I'm driving at right here, okay? You can factor numbers. You can factor x stuff because later on in the unit, the process will be identical. All right, so that's all we were doing for that one, just kind of getting some cute numbers there. Let's go ahead and do some LGs real quick, and then we will get to work. Learning goals. Boom. Learn to graph and analyze power and polynomial functions today. Pretty easy. First couple sections are not going to blow your mind in this unit. But they are very, very important. We all know what an x squared graph looks like. Hopefully it opens up on both ends, right? If it's a positive x squared, it opens up. If it's a negative x squared, it opens down. The main theme of today is what do bigger degree things look like? What if the power isn't x to the fourth, or x squared is x to the fourth, or x to the sixth, or x to the eighth? What do those look like? What's a cubic graph look like, x cubed? What's an x to the seventh graph look like? What's a negative x to the 55th graph look like? So this unit really takes the basics you know and expands them outwards to cover any kind of something called, we'll uh, call a polynomials. So, all right, here's your homework over this stuff. It's due on Wednesday, homework 4.1. Whether you're doing it online or on paper, it doesn't really matter. These are the assigned problems, one through 12, 15 through 20, and 23 through 30. So like I said, we'll just do a first couple sections of this stuff. Then we'll review. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bye. Mm -hmm. All right, let's dive in. So new unit, new notes, new titles, new everything. Let's get going. Here we go. This is titled Unit 4. This is a biggie. Building up to this thing. All of a sudden, your world's going to explode from linears and quadratics. That's all you could really deal with so far, lines and x squared things. That was what your last test was about, x squared stuff. You guys did a pretty good job on that overall. I'll get those back to you later. I can tell people are really stepping up their effort and understanding of the processes, which is great. So that's wonderful. We're going to take all those things. We're going to put them on steroids now. So now you'll be able to handle anything they might throw at you, not just x to the first things and x to the second things, but maybe x to the third, to fourth, fifth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, first thing you need to know is we're doing section 4.1 today. The title is Polynomial Functions. We're just going over um, kind of what the shapes of their graphs look like. And let's dive right in. First off, I want you to write down this definition right here, what a power function is. A power function is any function of that form. Can I just write down the form and then call it a day? Something that just looks like, and the A really isn't too important there, but a number, A, the key thing that makes it a power function is the x to the n, where n is a non-zero real number. So basically what they're saying is, the exponent has to be positive. You have a positive exponent, and this thing is called a power function right there. That's really all you got to know about. So they say power function, you're good. All right, there's lots of kinds of power functions, but the ones I really want you to harp on are these right here. And let me try to summarize this for you real quick, because we have talked about this before, but I'll put it on the board for you. Um, all of these, this is extremely important to understand. You already know these, you just don't know you know them. I'm going to give you a simple power function. Let's say it's x squared. What does a graph of x squared look like? That, that fits the bill, right? It's something times x to a power, right? Um, and the power is positive. What's x squared look like? It just looks like a crab up, right? Well, here's what I want you to know about power functions. This is what x squared looks like. Or if you have x to the fourth, it kind of looks like the same thing. Maybe there's some wiggles in it or something. 
Maybe an X to the sixth has even more wiggles. But I want you to copy down this basic pattern here for any of these. What do these all kind of do on the ends? They all go up to the top, right? This is very, very important. So please write down, this is what it looks like when you have an even degree. And degree is just a fancy word for the biggest exponent in your problem. So when you went quadratics the last unit, that degree was two. The biggest exponents of all were x squares, no matter what. There might be some x's, might not. This is all what you should expect to see when you see a x to the second kind of function or x to the fourth kind of function or anything else like that. Of course, what happens to any graph if you put a negative in front, guys? If this was a negative in front, what would it do to it? It would flip it. Yeah, exactly. So for any of these, the same thing holds. If I had a negative x to the sixth, it wouldn't open up. It opened kind of down. All of these look like they generally open upwards. There might be some funky stuff in the middle, but that's very, very important to understand. Also, equally important is to understand what something with an odd degree looks like. Now, they all have a very similar pattern also. You already know one of them. X to the first. One is an odd number. X to the first is a very boring graph. It's just a line, correct? Y equals X. Very, very simple. But they all kind of follow this pattern. And X cubed kind of looks like this. Again, there might be some bumps in the middle or, or might not be. It just depends on what's going on. But this is what anything with an odd degree kind of looks like. On the left side of any of them, they will go down. And on the right side, they will go up. This is the key thing you need to think of when you see some kind of degree. Again, if these had negatives in front, they would just flip them. So if it was a negative x to the seventh, it wouldn't start down and go up. It'd start up and go down kind of thing. Very, very, very important. Let's talk about their end behavior, because that will come up some. What do I mean by end behavior? Remember this junk? Remember what this means? This means what happens if I go really far to the left. Do you remember that thing? So what happens to any of these graphs as you go to the left? They all go up to infinity. So this is a fancy way of saying the left end behavior of this guy. Similarly, if you write this as x goes to infinity, that means I'm going to the right, correct? As you go to the right, it still goes up to infinity. You might want to jot that down for an even. That will always be the case for any even. Unless, of course, there's a negative in front of it, then it flips it, right? Then both ends wouldn't go to positive infinity. They go to negative infinity right there. Same kind of thing for odds. We should say what their end behavior is. This is the highlight of what you should really understand about this stuff today. You have an odd degree, any odd degree, <coughs> and you go really far to the left. That's what this means, right? X goes to the left. Then as I go to the left, this thing goes down, all the way down to negative infinity there. And as you go really far to the right, as you go to the right, all these graphs go up really high to positive infinity. So here's the end behavior you need to have and take out of today's lesson. Even degrees, no matter what degree thing you're dealing with, they all open upwards just like an x squared. Odd degrees, they all act like that x to the first. They all start down the bottom left, do something, and go to the top right. And that's what these two things are saying right here. This one's saying, as you go to the left, it goes up. As you go to the right, it goes up. This one, as you go to the left, you go down. As you go to the right, you go up. And that's what that entire slide right there is kind of saying right there. And I'm not going to put it on there because you should know it. What's a negative sign due to any of these graphs? If you multiply by negative, just flips it, right? Okay, so that's kind of what you need to know about that jazz right there. Summarizing one more time. Here it all is. Even degrees all look like that. All degrees all look like that. And there's their end behavior that we've talked about. All right, let's do an example real quick. Very simple stuff. Number one, describe the end behavior. That's this limit stuff, okay? What happens on the ends of this function, negative 2x cubed. All right, so 
With it, you should not have to go to a graphing calculator to graph this. You have your calculators though, right? It might not be a bad idea to go graph it just to confirm it, but you shouldn't need to. What is this? It's an X cubed, correct? Okay, so without the other stuff in front, what pops to mind when I say an odd degree? You should think something like this, right? Looks something like this, but there is a negative in front. What does that do to it? It flips it. So I'm thinking that this thing kind of looks like, well, it doesn't start down and goes up. It starts up and goes down. Maybe something-ish like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're just talking about what happens on the ends. Now, what happens on the ends? Well, let's write that down. Limit as x goes to negative infinity. What's that mean? I'm going to the left, right? And look at it. As you go to the left, what's your graph do? It goes up, 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 right? All the way to positive infinity. So in this particular case, the limit as we go to the left isn't positive infinity. End behavior, we're just talking about the ends. The other end, as x goes to positive infinity, as I'm walking very far to the right of this thing, is this one goes down, right? Down to negative infinity. So that's how I express the end behavior of this particular function. If you went and got your calculator out and graphed it, it looks something like this. Not the scale, it's not gonna be perfect, but I guarantee you on the ends it would do exactly that. And that's the point of today. What do the ends do? What do the ends do? All right, moving right along. This is your other definition of day. It builds on this. It's called a polynomial. Let me kind of define it on the board over here. What is a polynomial? Poly means many, nomial means terms, kind of. So many, many terms floating around in this. It looks something like this. And this is going to look a little daunting, but don't let it scare you. It's just a form. It's just a way we write things. Mm -hmm. Kind of, since we're generalizing things, we're, we, you know, we're kind of running out of letters. We don't want to keep labeling these A, B, C, like the quadratic formula was, like, oh, A is in front of the X squared, and B is in front of the X, and all that jazz. So we're going to label something like this. This is the general format of a polynomial. Write it down. It looks complicated, but it's not. It's a fancy way of saying that we're going to have, this part kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? This part's just a quadratic, correct? Like some number, some number times x, some number times x squared. And this just says you can keep going with it. You could have cubed things. You could have some number times x cubed. You can go all the way up to whatever you want is what this is saying. So anything, this would be an example of an nth degree polynomial right there. I don't know what n is. Remember, the degree is the highest exponent. In case you forgot what that term is, you might want to write it down. Degree. The highest exponent. Degree is the highest exponent. And that's what we're obsessed with. We're obsessed with this dude in front. The person in front is going to tell the whole story. We have a name for the things in front. It's a leading term, first off. The leading term is the term in the front. It's the thing in the very big front right here. So it's the term with the biggest exponent, or the highest exponent, whatever you want to call it. And the number that's in front of it, eh, I'm not, I'm not going to sit around saying these terms all the time, but it might come up in your homework. The leading coefficient is the number in front of your leading term. Turns out to understand what any polynomial is going to do on the ends, whether it's simple or not, all you need to do is consider what the leading term is, the term out in front. The rest really doesn't matter. It will have some wiggles and stuff. The other junk is what makes wiggles happen, but the ends will always do the same kind of thing. So let's do a few examples of this. This is really not that complicated. Here is your first polynomial. Let's say it's 4x to the 8th minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 29 or something like that. It doesn't matter. 
This is an example of a big polynomial. And what's a polynomial? It's just, it's just a bunch of, it's just like a square thing, right? Here's a quadratic, correct? I don't have any cubes, I don't have any fourths, I don't have any fifths, but I have some eight power things. So it's just the same thing you've always been doing. Please always write them in the same order, though. Biggest exponents first, and your exponents go down as you do. So this is an example of what degree, what degree is this, guys? Let's identify everything. What's degree mean? Basic, big exponent, what's the biggest exponent you see? Eight, yeah. This is an eighth degree polynomial right here. <clears throat> Nonetheless, what is the leading term? It's just the term that's in the lead. So it's this dude. This is the guy in front, right? So it's this whole thing. 4x to the 8. That is my leading term. That's all you're actually going to be focused on for what this thing looks like. The leading coefficient is just a smaller part of that. That just means the number part. So what was in front of that thing was a 4, correct? The only reason you're really obsessed with that is because whether it's positive, it opens in the normal direction, correct? And if it's negative, it opens downwards or flipped or whatever. So what does this thing kind of look like? Kind of. Just by looking at this, you should know kind of what the graph of this is going to look like. First of all, what degree is it? It's 8. That's an even degree, correct? So you should think, OK, it looks like an x squared. What's an x squared look like? That's even 2, right? 2 is even, x squared. What's an x squared look like? On both ends, it opens up. Exactly. So on this end, guess what? Both ends open up. So rough sketch of this is something like this. Maybe it's got some wiggles. You want to draw some wiggles? Go ahead. If you don't, that's fine, too. All we're really obsessed with today is understanding what happens on the ends. How would I fancy up what's going on in these ends? How would I say this in a fancy way? I would say it using this language right here. What would happen to this thing on both ends? As you go to the left, what's the graph do? It goes up, right? As you walk to the left, it goes up. So this means to the left, correct? As x goes to the left, this thing goes up. You should write that line down too. In fact, it's, a, it's what you just wrote down for your notes on an even degree. On both ends, whether you go to the left or to the right, it's going to open upwards right there. Notice that that analysis had nothing to do with these, did it? I didn't care about them at all. All you have to focus on is the leading person. The leading person will tell you what it's like, and you can draw a cute little graph based on that. That's the key thing. The leading dude will tell you everything. All right. So let's look at some RAM examples and see if we can just do them in our minds. Here we go. A, 2x to the fourth thing. Degree is four, would you agree? Fourth degree? What does an even degree look like? Go down to a simpler even, two. That's x squared. Again, looks like. Probably open up, right? And as I, what do I say about the end behavior? As I go to a negative infinity, it goes up to infinity, right? As x goes to positive infinity, it also goes up to infinity. So you should just have a kind of a U shape in your mind for that one. What about B? That's an odd degree. What do odd degrees look like? Well, they look like that kind of x to the first thing, right? They start down the bottom left. They might do some wiggles and they might go up. So you would say for this one, as you go to the left, the graph goes down, correct? As you go to the right, the graph goes up. This is really what I'm hitting today with the end behavior. How about this one down here? Oh, this is not a polynomial. Now, look at the definition of a polynomial. It's only got one kind of letter in it, right? X's, 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 this one over here? It's all X stuff, right? If there's a mix of X's and Y's or something like that, you might want to make a note to yourself that that's not a polynomial. Might make a note to yourself. There's like a problem like that. What to say? Oh, tell me if this is a if this is a polynomial, tell me the degree and the leading coefficient, all that crap. And if it's not a polynomial, tell me it's not a polynomial. Well, polynomials only have one kind of letter in them. So part C would not be a polynomial because that's got X's and Y's. What about D? D is a what degree? Fifth degree, right? Because X one's five. So that's an odd degree. So right off the bat, you should think of this odd degree graph. And if I was to go graph that thing, you would know on the left, it goes down. And on the right, it goes up. That's the big thing for today. All right. Now look at this check down here at the bottom, too. 
Uh, select the degree and leading coefficients of this. Now, look at this thing on the end, 6 over x. Do you see anything in this formula that has divide by x in it? I don't see that. And we haven't dealt with that yet either, have we? We just got x's, next squares, next cubes. So again, if you see something that's weird like that, that's not a polynomial either. You might want to make a note to yourself like that too. Because the definition said that the exponent for a power thing had to be positive. The degree has to be positive. You can't have any fractions divided by x's or divided by x squared or anything like that. That's not going to fly. It's got to look like something normal, okay? Something we've normally been doing. If it doesn't look normal to you, it ain't going to be cool. The only thing that should be new to you today is that the exponents might be bigger. That's all there is to it. Hmm, all right, that's good enough for me. Um, good to, well, the old ideas still apply. I don't have anything new to say. What if I ask you for the number of zeros? Well, what zeros mean? It's just where it's crossed the axis, right? Same thing you've always been doing. Get your calculator out, graph it, do second calc, you know, left bound, right bound, find a zero. The only difference is there's more zeros. This looks like a what degree? Odd, even? Look at this picture. What does that look like? An odd or an even? It looks like an odd, yeah. And one thing I'm going to harp on is look how many spots it hits the axis at. Can you count them? One, two, three. That's an odd number, isn't it? Mm, it's like an odd degree has an odd number of zeros. But you can find those on your calculator. What about this one down here in the bottom left? What degree does that look like? That looks like an even. I would agree. Does it look like a boring x squared thing? Not quite, right? It's got some humps in it. So I bet you it's higher than x squared. Maybe it's an x to the fourth or something like that. In fact, how many spots is across the axis at? Four. I bet you this is an x to the fourth graph right there. And you see the end behavior does exactly what you think it would do. On both ends, it goes up to infinity. That's kind of all there is to it. Um, I don't really have anything else to harp on today. That's kind of all I wanted to hit. Does everything make sense from today? Okay, so the main thing is, know what an even degree and an odd degree look like. Know what happens on their ends. If you know that, you'll be fine. And then they might ask you some questions about, okay, what's the degree, what's the leading coefficient, and all that stuff. Just go back to your definitions and jot them down. That's all for today. You have the rest of the hour to work on your homework 4.1.